So a very good afternoon to all the participants, and uh, you definitely know me. And if you have attended my classes, uh, many people are shaking their heads. Yes, they know me well. So now today we are going to discuss uh, the essay paper of 2020, and uh, I hope you must have seen the paper and maybe puzzled how to solve the paper. Yes. Now, when we talk about the essay paper, let us see. Uh, it was almost like a fear factor. And um, yes, uh, only a Khatro ke Khiladi can win that paper because there were various philosophical topics. Yes, there were five philosophical topics which were actually more than they are required. Yes, so normally the trend has been in UPSC, there are four philosophical essays and four general essays. But this time there were five philosophical essays. So the paper hit the most, it hurt the most, that is philosophical essay, which is the major fear factor for many students. So on this note, see, do not worry at all, because the classes, if you have attended, you've got every possible ammunition and content with you, which ultimately will be helping you in even writing the philosophical essays. I always told you in the class that the most important thing is decoding the meaning of the topic. If you are able to decode the meaning of a topic and connect with the right introduction, definitely you can use the content and the formulas that we discussed in the class to fill the main body and arrive at the conclusion. So on this note, let us first of all see the paper first. We'll, I will be giving you hints on what various topics that were ultimately asked, a trend analysis of past two years, and then definitely I will be discussing what four or five topics for you in detail. Yes. So let us see. So major focus will be on the philosophical essays today. Yes, I am going to decode the philosophical essay part for you. So, so let us see the paper first. Now, so the first topic, if you read is life is a long journey between a human being and being human. Yes. So now uh, this is the topic. If you remember, if you're the part of the uh, first two classes that I gave to you, if you remember when we we're designing the formulas, we came to know that in the first formula that we are all born as human beings. If you remember, I mentioned that in the class, if you are, we are all born as human beings, nobody is born as human resource for the country. So we have to invest in human development so as to convert the human being into human resource. Now here, the meaning of humane means displaying humanity. See, we are all born as human beings. Human beings are what? Just one of the species, we are homo sapiens. Now homo sapiens are just one of the millions of species that the earth has, yes? So how to distinguish us from the rest of the species? We have to evolve ourselves from what being human being into becoming a humane, displaying human values, yes? So hence, this is a long journey. Now for arriving at this long journey, we have to ultimately design a method, how to prepare the human beings in the entire society. Now, if you know the method, we have discussed the method in the class itself. But before going for the method, here I'm just giving you a hint at this moment, I will be dealing with this topic in little detail. First of all, let's just see all the topics first, yes. So here, we have to design a formula so as to convert a human being into a person reflecting humanistic values, yes. That is the journey that we need to travel, we have to design and explain in the topic itself. Now let us see the second topic. Mindful manifesto is the catalyst to a tranquil self. Yes. Again, a very uh, typical topic, difficult to decode, but as simple as possible. You'll see, is basically the mind, which is the CPU of the human body. Yes. So minds determines the destiny of a person. Minds either breaks or makes the destiny of a nation. So hence, what type of mind makes the destiny of the person? That is basically sanity, rationality, scientific temper. And if the mind is displaying what unsoundness on the basis of biases, hatred, jealousy, greed, definitely it is not going to create a tranquil self. So again, we have to explain how to create, how to create evolved minds in the society so that the tranquility is visible individually and collectively in the society. So again, this is depending upon again, the method, method depends upon the formula and all these we have done in the classes. So today I will be linking these topics with the formula that we discussed in the classes and putting them in the right frame through introduction, the main body and the conclusion. Yeah. So now the next topic, ships do not sink because of water around them. Ships sink because of water that gets into them. Yes. Again, little difficult to decode. 
if I try to simplify this, the meaning of this is, see, we should not be, we should not be influenced by the negativity around us. Yes. If we are influenced by the negativity around us, so we also become the same person, the same negative person. And if the negativity prevails and spread to all, the societies decline. Yes. For example, hate cannot be fought with hate. It has to be fought with love. Yes. Similarly, war cannot be ended with a war. It has to be ended with a peace. Yes. Similarly, when we talk of violence, violence cannot be stopped with violence, but has to be stopped with or miscounted with non-violence. Yes. So hence, in short, this is telling about that an eye for an eye makes the entire world blind. So hence, we have to work in a different manner. Rather than swayed by the negativity, we have to ultimately create positive role models and positive examples in the society so as to create influences for the others so that they become a leading light for many people in the society and society is preserved, conserved rather than declining on the basis of negativities. Yes. So again, the method is required to construct this topic. Yes. Now the next topic is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Many times you may have read a line or heard a line that simple living and high thinking you must have heard this line, simple living, high thinking. Yes. So again, we have to convert that into what, how to promote high thinking in the society. Because when the, what is the meaning of high thinking is more rationality in thought, sanity in thought. When the person is more rational and sane, definitely simple way of living emerges. Yes. So we have to ultimately promote sanity in the society. Okay. And sanity will give rise to simplicity in approaches, actions, attitudes, and even reducing the desire for more and more money and material possessions. Yes. So hence we will be talking about this again in detail. Now these are four philosophical topics. Now there's a spill over of philosophical topic even in section B. Yes. So let us see the section B now. So this is culture is what we are. Civilization is what we have. Again a little difficult topic to decode. Yes. I'm not going to give you a hint at this moment uh, for this topic because I will be dealing and opening this topic in detail in the class itself. Yes. Okay. Now, these are the five philosophical topics. Now, let us see the sixth. There can be no social justice without economic prosperity. Everyone agrees. See, to promote social justice to all, money is required. Yes. Money. It can also be required in the hand of the government. Yes. See why, why there is so much fuss about rising GDP numbers. Why GDP should be rising always. GDP should be rising always because 5 trillion economy, maybe more. Yes, maybe more. If the economy keeps on rising, that means if the volume of GDP rises, then the revenue of the government also rises. When the revenue of the government rises, government also becomes cash rich. Yes. And that can be provided through budgets to various social welfare schemes promoting social justice. Similarly, when we invest, when we invest in such a manner so as to create what economic justice for the people by providing them livelihoods, raising their incomes, even the rising incomes of the household level will lead to what more investment in what social development, that is better education, health, skill development, every possible thing happens. So money is required to promote Yes, definitely social development and social justice. But on the contrary, if the rise in GDP number is due to only few big capitalists, yes, not leading to what trickle down of income, then it can be a problem. So we know that 1% people control more than 70% of the wealth. Yes. So this is not the way of promoting what rise in GDP numbers. There should be equal distribution or equity in distribution or trickle down of what distribution, what earning opportunities. Yes. And when earning opportunities rises, even the family invest more in social development, even government due to rising revenue, invest in social de development. So the collaborative effort of both the family and the government promotes social justice. Yes. So money is definitely a bigger factor here. Yes. Now, next topic is patriarchy is least noticed yet the most significant structure of social inequality. Now, when patriarchy becomes what uh, least noticed or invisible, 
when it becomes a way of life so we all know many times women also promote patriarchy why it's not the fault of women women promote patriarchy because they are raised in patriarchy in such a manner that they propagate patriarchy yes. so hence when the people who against whom the discriminations are being done and they become partner in more discrimination it becomes least noticed so that means when we want to deal with patriarchy when we want to erase the mentality or the attitude both in the men and women linked with patriarchy we have to erase that from the mindset of both women and men so we have to now design a method how to deal with patriarchy and we have done this in this class if you remember fulfillment of new women is a myth the topic that we have done in detail yes okay so here the major issues discussed in a topic can be visible again if you are going to write this essay yes and the last topic is technology as a silent factor in international relations yes so technology always plays a very very important factor in what reshaping the global relations yes countries relations for example when you talk about the industrial revolution in the europe industrial revolution in europe ultimately led to colonization of what the entire world yes for the resources and for the market hence reshaped the relations worldwide later when there was a tussle going on of for colonization and what more and more uh, uh, control and power across the world led to the world wars world wars led to huge investment in what weapon technology yes creating wars but after that after the wars world war when the world realized the futility of war then what emerged united nation emerged yes but still the world came into uh the control of what the cold war era the capitalist versus communist yes again they invested heavily on the basis of science and technology in what space wars nuclear wars yes okay or uh, and in third country wars yes so again reshaped the relationship across the world the world was divided into two parts so hence to counter this nam emerged yes now similarly even when we talk about today today's world is highly influenced by technology everywhere whether when you talking about communication or the 5g control the world is uh, ultimately uh, 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 almost at a at a war who are going to control the technology when you talk about cyber security uh, when the uh, communication defense space and even in positive sense climate change yes for example india's international solar alliance yes when india is emerging as a major promoter of solar and the solar power definitely it's reshaping india's relationship with what entire world so technology in every possible way whether space whether security whether communication whether climate plays important role in reshaping the global relations yes okay so you have to ex uh, you have to answer this on the basis of your knowledge of technology your knowledge of current affairs linked with technology and how they influence the international relations so now in all what we find that there are five philosophical essays and three general topics and three general topics so there is a huge tilt towards philosophical topics so this ultimately becomes a challenge for various students to deal the philosophical topics and today we are going to deal with those yes now let us see the trend trend is almost the same i am going to show now the uh, 2019 paper so 2019 paper the section is purely philosophical in nature all the four topics are linked with what philosophical thoughts see i am going to give you an idea here we should not be at all concerned with the philosophical topics yes why see philosophical topics or quotes or thoughts given in the form of topic by upsc these thoughts emerged in the minds of various philosophers and thinkers see philosophers and thinkers how the thought emerged in their minds because they observed the society yes on the observation of society they created a thought that means we have to convert this abstract thought into application into the society yes so never write the philosophical or abstract topic in an abstract way we have to convert that into application because thought emerged after the observation of the society now we talk about the section b yes now section b is mostly the general topics yes so this is based on culture this is based on what health and education means human resource development 
this is based on democracy and the role of media in this and definitely artificial intelligence and role on what economy and what job growth or joblessness yes so these are the general topics so this is basically a balanced paper yeah this is a balanced paper for philosophical and for general topics but again if you go to 2018 again you will finding five philosophical topics yes so here one philosophical in what section a first is linked with technology and environment second is philosophical in nature a good life is one inspired by love and guided by knowledge then third is basically social and economic justice fourth is again international relations and the section b is again four philosophical so means the 2018 uh, perspective in terms of more tilt towards philosophical topics has been repeated in 2020 paper yes so five philosophical topics so hence we should be very very ready with our concepts how to deal with the philosophical topics yes so on this note let us now start decoding the essay paper of yes 2020 on this note let us decode so uh, let us start with an approach first we should be adopting a common approach whether a topic is philosophical or general yes so let us see what can be that approach so now you know you are an aspiring civil servant and you want to become a civil servant so while writing your approach should be the approach of a civil servant so who is a civil servant civil servant is the manager of society now managers working where in the government and the government takes oath in the name of the constitution as the government is liable to implement the constitution so who you are you are the catalyst in rolling out the constitution by bringing welfare to the society so that approach should be visible in your write ups yes so i have converted this i have converted this into a slide for you so civil servant what should be the approach of a civil servant first of all the outlook of the civil servant should be based on the constitutional vision yes outlook of the civil servant should be based on the constitutional vision and where this outlook is summarized yes that is summarized in the preamble of the constitution yes that we need to promote justice liberty equality and fraternity to all citizens yes this has been summarized in the preamble of the constitution so hence the outlook of civil servant should be what is summarized in the preamble of the constitution now on the basis of this outlook in the mind civil servant should be having the knack of assessing the society yes next comes assessment yes assessment means the current status of society the outlook is or the or the glasses that the person is wearing is that of the constitution on the basis of that observing the society observing in what terms the progress made so far the development that already taken place and the visible gaps the distance yet to be covered to match the constitutional vision yes so we have to now assess the current standing of the society the development that we have created and the distance that we need to cover because the distance that we need to cover for that we will be requiring solutions hence the third stage of the civil servant approach should be design logical steps in the form of policies schemes and programs to fill the gap and finally achieve the constitution goals yes we need to prepare the society yes now by designing policies schemes and programs you have to do what prepare the society ensure march towards constitutional vision and promoting national development yes and promoting national de development so three basic things should be on your mind constitution the current status of society gaps through better gap an analysis what should be done in terms of solutions and finally touching the constitution goals promoting national development so means constitution society and national development should be in your mind when you are writing most of the topics
Okay. Now for this, for this, what are the basic requirements? The first basic requirement is you should have a full command on the entire general studies. Yes. All thematic areas spread across all GS papers. We all know essay does not have a defined syllabus. So majorly the content is emerging from all GS thematic areas of spread across all the papers. I always tell students the day you are able to write a decent essay on any given topic, you are a UPSC fit candidate because you mastered your GS. Then awareness, now awareness on all related current affairs. So now your current affairs knowledge become important. So for your GS, your basic books, your classroom lectures, your notes become important for your current affairs. If you're following focus, DNS becomes very, very important. Now you have to link your current affairs with the GS thematic areas. And third thing that is required is observation. Yes. That is now here broader understanding and insight about Indian society and basic here for with respect to Indian society, you should be having broader understanding and basic understanding about cultures and societies in the world. Yes. So three things you should be having command awareness and third is observation about the society. Now, all these things will be utilized in your write ups. And there's a fourth thing also. Yes. And that fourth thing is you've already done my lectures. Yes. So what I do in lectures, I combine, I combine all these three GS, your current affairs and the observation of society. And that linkage helps you in drafting a number of things. Now on this basis, let us move ahead. So let us take the first topic. Yes. Life is a long journey between human being and being humane. Yes. Let us now decode this topic in detail. Now, when you are coming across a philosophical topic, so what you should be doing first, first of all, we should be decoding the meaning of the topic. The most important thing is decoding the meaning of the topic. Hence, we should be preparing a, maybe a few pointers for us. Yes. So let, let us see how the pointers are being created. So I've converted this in the form of, in short, what is the meaning of this topic? See human being. Yes. So we are just one of the species that is homo sapiens is one of the species on planet earth. Yes. So we are just born as human beings. Now, next. Now to become humane. Yes from just being a human being to become humane, that is displaying humanity, requires investment in human development. Yes, this requires investment. Now, further. Now human development means what? Again, if you, Remember the classes, I uh, again hinted you that we are all born as empty minds. Yes, we are all born as empty minds. So what should be the process of human development to convert an empty mind into an open mind? Yes, to convert an empty mind in open mind. So open minded person definitely is more receptive, more participative, more mm -hmm. rational in nature. Yes. and definitely becomes more collaborative, more democratic in nature. Yes. Means moving towards humanities, a close mind person, close minded person never move towards human values. Yes. So open minded persons definitely display humane or humanity displaying uh, or becomes humane displaying humanity. Now, now let us identify where these humane values are jotted. Yes. Human values are the display of constitutional values. Yes. Visible in where again, they're visible in preamble, visible in fundamental rights. Yes. We should be respecting the rights of each other. Yes. And also committed towards fundamental duties. 
So I told you that whenever we are writing UPSC, decode in such a manner that there should always be a touch with the constitution. Yes. Then you are going to show that you are a job fit candidate with a potential to connect constitution with the society's development. Yes. Okay. So now human values. So now there's a logical link now. Yes. See. So human being is just one of the species. So we have to travel a distance from just being a human being and displaying human values. So we have to invest in human development because we all are born as empty minds. We have to convert the people into open-minded people. And here, then definitely they will display humanity. And the meaning of humanity are properly jotted down in the constitution values mentioned in the preamble, fundamental rights and fundamental duties. Now this was a basically the breakup of the meaning of the topic. Let us convert this into a proper introduction. Yes. So let us see how to convert this into a proper introduction. So if you read this introduction, you'll find now I've tried to convert into a full paragraph. So on the planet earth, human being is just one of the species among millions of species. Yes. What differentiates a human being from the rest is larger brain size and and by being bipedal, it can convert the larger brain size and its thoughts into application. This is the first differentiation between human being as a species and the other species. Now, by using the brain size and the bipedal nature, definitely human beings have created what various development for itself. Yes. So let us see further. Human beings have seen gradual evolution from wanderers and gatherers stage to settlements, agriculture, discoverers, inventors, builders of empires, countries, governments, institutions, and even trying to move beyond the ambit of earth into vast unexplored universe. Yes. Now, why I have mentioned this? Because this is a differentiating factor. Such evolution definitely differentiates human beings from the rest. But now there comes a question. But have human beings evolved beyond displaying animal strings have they a proper evolution of the minds or not yes for example are they still engulfed by violence jealousy intimidation an eye for an eye might is right or preying on on the hapless weak and needy if they're still engulfed in this that means we have to still travel a distance of evolution yes so now the last part of this, if not, then our evolution is work in progress because the biggest sign of evolution and differentiator from other species is display of human values. Yes. So now you got the connect here. Now you got the connect here. So here in the introduction, we have to connect the entire thing by disclosing the meaning and explaining the meaning in such a manner that everything gets connected. So now we started human being is just one of the species now, but definitely we have got larger brain size being bipedal. We can do more things than rest of the species. And we have done because we have achieved all these things, but still, if we are still engulfed with such type of animal strings, like violence, jealousy, yes, all these type of negative values, still there's a work in progress. Because the right form of evolution and the major differentiator from other species will be the displaying of human values. Yes. So now let us ultimately now mention in the uh, paragraph. Yes. Human values are the display of constitutional values visible in the preamble, fundamental rights and fundamental duties of the Indian constitution. And globally, if you talk about it's in universal declaration of human rights. Yes. So globally, it is mentioned in the U UN Human Declaration, uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights, yes, of 1948. Now, let us ultimately explain this in the form of example now. So after decoding the meaning at the start, now give examples to prove it, yes. So in the past, human values have been collectively displayed by our 
constitution drafters and which is broadly reflected when they have created a thing called preamble yes so they have deliberately focused on the humane values now let us move beyond this there are various current and past examples who are beacons of human value instigating and inducing the people to understand and adopt and apply human values for making society a better place for example you know there's a girl called greta thunberg through a concern for humanity in the field of environment is trying to convince people and the global leadership to act similarly malala in the field of education dr rajendra singh in the field of water conservation kailash satyarthi in the field of child rights yes so there are various people who are not just being humans they are they are not just being human beings but they display humanity uh, or human values in their in their way of doing things in their concern for the society in making society a better place so these are the examples that you can quote but these are the known examples and these are not the only examples there are various people which are doing their work very silently across all these spheres of life and trying to contribute positively to the society they are the balancing factor which are preventing the society from collapsing yes because there are certain hidden gems which are doing their work very fine so after explaining the meaning of the topic at the first first uh, uh, first uh, 60 to 70 words we added the examples we added the examples now more examples here now let us move ahead here now that's why i deliberately mentioned this these are not the only examples because we can quote only the known examples so we should be giving due weightage to the people who are doing their work silently yes so even there are hidden gems in every sphere of life who are contributing in righteous manner for making our society a better place yes now but where are the challenges but where are the challenges challenges but these are overwhelmed yes these shining examples are overwhelmed by voices of people lacking humane values and they are broadly visible in the form of biases hatred violence undemocratic values moral positional and monetary corruption prevalent in the society and these type of people may be visible in what more large number yes so all those shining stars of humanity or human values are overpowered by the people who are devoid of all these humanistic values yes so now our introduction is properly completed yes now what should be your main body now now in the main uh, in again i am reminding in the introduction we have decoded the meaning we explained that with in the form of examples and we also came across we touched the constitution again we Uh, do uh, did the reality check on the basis of challenges that we are facing in the society now we have to cure this now the curing part will be done in the main body hence in the main body of this essay let us explore examples of humanity from past and current nationally and internationally in detail now you know your history you know your uh, current affairs you can quote what various examples either from india or from outside the people who displayed humanity through their actions yes but this topic cannot be written just by giving examples because we have to find cure for the people who are displaying undemocratic values because we want to see humanistic values generally present in the society it should not be presented by only few people it should be spread across the masses so now the part 2 of this essay should be how to impart right humane values to the people in society now that should be our major focus area do we have any plan do we have any idea yes how to ultimately how to ultimately create a better society on the basis of human values do we have any idea now we have to do this now we have to prepare the society and for this we have to design a formula 
we have to design a formula and now i'm going to give you a hint on the formula that we did in the class okay and the formula that we did in the class you know there was a how to prepare the society there's a combination of what we have to generate values and followed by distribution of justice so here we have to what strengthen values plus distribution of justice now strength in values this is required for what i i i explained to you on for behavior development and behavior modification now in this there are five factors that we discussed yes starting with values based education starting with values based education i hope you are able to recall that okay and other four you are going to fill the blank spaces yes on the basis of recalling the class recalling the notes that i have given to you you have to fill the space okay and second is distribution justice that is political economic social and environmental and i gave the formula this leads to actually preparation of society this leads to preparation of society so naturally the society having better values proper distribution of economic and social justice definitely it will be marching towards more peace stability collaboration and displaying more humanistic values concern for others now you have to explain this formula by explaining in detail in the main body this is the way to prepare the society displaying humanistic values displaying constitutional values now this explanation will lead to this explanation will lead to the conclusion yes now the conclusion again in paragraph on the basis of the comprehensive and non discriminatory implementation of the formula explained above for the preparation of human beings the society gradually starts marching towards better acceptance and application of democratic and egalitarian values becomes more participative and inclusive able to counter irrationality biases hatred decline in morality and hence itself becomes a beacon of humane values displaying constitutional and universal declaration of human rights morality yes now further the concluding line this results in virtue that is morality prevailing over vices scientific temper prevailing over temper further leading towards sustained social national and global development on sound principles of humanity i hope you got the entire connection yes i hope you got the entire connection and you will definitely be in the position to write now 1200 words on this essay topic yes okay so now what i explained see i told you that all the material is with you all the ideas are with you all these have been given to you in the classes the only thing that you need to apply is understand the meaning of the topic decode it very properly and link it with the required formula for explanation leading to the conclusion so on this note i am now moving to the next topic yes so this was a topic yes a uh, very interesting topic culture is what we are civilization is what we have yes. 
so culture is what we are civilization is what we have again we have to decode the meaning of the topic so instead of now doing in the form of pointers i have converted this into a full paragraph yes in, as a full introduction yes so let us see what is what is the difference between first of all we have to differentiate between what is culture and what is civilization yes so the two key terms are culture and civilization now we have to differentiate now the introduction is civilization yes so civilization is the level of progress and development achieved by any society in the fields of ad governance administration economy society science and technology that is why when we study about different civilizations across the world for example you have read about indus civil indus valley civilization mesopotamian inca sumerian egyptian then we measure the progress on the fields of on the basis of the fields mentioned above so when we read about indus valley civilization we always read about its administrative structure yes we read about its economy yes we read read, read about its society okay what type of level of development of science at that time yes okay so whenever we talk about civilization civilization is linked with the status of development across all these fields governance administration economy society science and technology now civilizational development now see and this should not be stationary civilization should always be improving so hence the next connection will be civilizational development is a relentless pursuit as the scope of improvement in all the above fields is unlimited because we can keep on improving across all these fields yes even today various countries areas have achieved different levels of achievements and hence they are different in terms of development yes for example scandinavian countries are in different zone altogether germans japanese chinese indians yes so their civilizational stage is at different level yes in terms of what development across all these fields hence civilization is what we have now we have to what link with the topic civilization is what we have that is level of development achieved by a society or country so civilization is what we have missed the current level of development achieved by us this is what we have and there is a huge scope for improvement in terms of what we have yes we can definitely improve it forever we can build on that yes now again when you read the introduction you are finding the connect you are decoding the meaning of civilization first civilization i deliberately connected with the thing that you are studying that is indus valley civilization i we see we read about all these level of development across all these fields yes that is that measures the status of the civilization its development and we know this this can be improved forever because hence this becomes a relentless per pursuit of perf perfection across all these fields and factors that is why different countries or areas have achieved different levels of development so hence civilization is what we have the current status of development and we can improve it in future so that we ha can have better developmental stage of our civilization yes now this is the meaning of civilization let us see now what is culture yes on the other side culture is visible in day to day practice what we practice on daily basis way of living yes and approach and is commonly reflected in our religious practices customs rituals festivals social composition food way of dressing language conversation art forms architecture etc yes so means how we do things on daily basis what is our day to day activity how we think yes okay our approaches and these are linked with what our religious practice and all these features all these constitute a culture of any place and even there can be 
culture of ethics or corruption yes for example you talk about japanese japanese yes they have got culture of what better ethics and probity in their public life yes and when you talk about various developing country they may be having larger larger impact of what corruption in their systems yes so even in the society there can be culture of ethics and corruption hence culture is what we are yes so this define what we are what type of people we are okay hence our culture defines what type of people we are so again we connected with a topic now further more or less more or less culture remains same now we have to connect both civilization and culture we have to connect both now we have explained them separately now we have to connect both culture and civilization more or less culture remains same but the pace of but the pace of civilizational development brings new practices influencing cultural changes okay so when we develop in the form of administration governance economy society science when our civilization proceeds forward in terms of development definitely it brings change in the culture also yes for example inclusive social and economic development accompanied by liberal democratic values breaks the traditional hold of see when we promote inclusive social and economic development supported by very healthy democratic values breaks the traditional hold of patriarchy caste class regional and religious barriers break rigidity brings fluidity in the social composition and conversation hence evolution of culture is dependent on the pace of civilizational development yes so cultural changes can definitely be getting influenced on the basis of the civilizational development happening yes because the positive changes will definitely be eliminating the eliminating the problems in our culture it will leading to evolution of our culture also yes so hence the civilization development always going to influence the cultural practices now again what we have done we have connected the entire topic in the introduction itself in the introduction we decoded what is civilization we decoded what is culture and how both these are connected now further okay is it not coming full as stated in the preamble of constitution direction of civilization development oh, it's not coming full here yes maybe going down okay now so uh, it's not coming here so i will be just uh, be explaining this so now civilizational development so our civilization development direction is given where again in the constitution of our country so our civilization should be moving forward in terms of what promoting justice liberty equality and fraternity okay that should be the progress that we should be making as a civilization our civilization should be evolving in terms of political economic and social justice liberty equality and fraternity and these changes will definitely be influencing our day to day culture yes this will bringing positive changes in our culture also eliminating the problems of the past yes now what should be done in the main body now we found a connection again we found a link with the constitution so now again let us see how to connect this so part 1 will be so now how to measure what we have yes so now let us check at what stage we stand as a culture in terms of development yes so culture here we are in terms of, so sorry in terms of civilization sorry so at what stage we are at this moment in the terms of what civilization development that means our country's development so in terms of civilization development let us measure where we actually stand here yes? so we have to now put a measurement criteria so now what can be the most uh, 
clear measurement criteria to understand at what level of civilization development we are at this moment. Let us see what can be those very, very interesting and what factual information that you can draw in terms of what explaining at what level we stand at this moment. And these are, no, you read again current affairs. So these are, these are basically the global ranking parameters. Okay, so you read global ranking parameters, you read current affairs again, again, current affairs comes into picture. So it is measured by rise in global ranking parameters, such as democracy index, HDI, Gini, nutrition, gender development, quality of life, happiness, environment, business ecosystem, press freedom. What are these? These are the indicators of what country's development. Yes. These are the indicators of if the country is terming it as a civilization, Indian civilization. Yes, and definitely it is linked with Indian civilization development, developmental stage. So current ranking symbolize what we have, at what level we are standing. Hence, we need to improve. Because we know in various parameters, we are not performing well. So in terms of the civilization, we have to evolve in terms of development. Yes. Now part two will be, hence let us lay down a formula of civilizational development. Now we have to explain how to promote civilizational development. We have to move from this level to a better level. Because we want to have higher standards of development. We want to have more development, yes? Development means better for the entire humanity and society. That is the meaning of development, yes? So hence, let us lay down a formula of civilizational development. So let's design a formula. Again, this formula we have designed in the class when you attended the lectures, yes? So what is the way or what is the method of promoting entire civilization or nation's development. So let us see what is that formula. You know this. If you remember the formula that we talked about that we need to strengthen the democracy. We need to strengthen the democracy. Democracy across all those four factors. Political economic, social, environmental, yes. So in terms of political systems, in terms of governance systems, we have to evolve. In terms of economy, we have to evolve. In terms of society, we have to evolve. In terms of environment, definitely we have to evolve. And now to strengthen the democracy, what we require? We require a support from a very, very better system of governance that is known as good governance yes we require a system of good governance to progress as a civilization to progress as a nation and we all know the progress is made or directed by the people in power but definitely requires a support from the common people so progress of a nation is based on two wheels, the state actors and the non-state actors, that is the common people. So hence we need to prepare the common people also to contribute in civilizational development. So let us see how to prepare the people and involve them in our countries or civilizational development. So hence we discussed this in the class, we have to convert human beings into human resource first. So HRD, we need to prepare the society so that society itself promotes evolution of the civilization. And the second part is HRM, human resource management. Now in the HRD part, in the HRD part, we talked about the first major factor is education. And education of what type? Quality education. And the education should not be confined only to the institutions or the educational institutions. Education should be 
connected with all the people in the form of lifelong learning yes so education it should be of quality first of all and definitely in the form of lifelong learning lifelong learning for all so now for the civilizational development definitely we have to work on strengthening the democracy across all the four factors we require a very very efficient system of governance pushing the development but also simultaneously preparing the society to contribute in development yes okay so now education and the second factor we talked about health yes this is the way to prepare a sound human resource definitely productive for raising national productivity contributing positively for the development of the society the nation or the civilization now further for managing the human resource and the contributing factor which is going to bring people together so that they start participating again in what national development productivity is we need to promote economic justice and that can be through livelihoods to all now when most of the people in the society have got gainful livelihoods dignified livelihoods incomes and earnings definitely the society is evolving yes civilization is moving ahead in terms of what even economic development with proper spread of what economic means earnings to all and the form of development civilization development is social justice and we talked about in short this is this means respect to others in short this means respect to others and the next and the next is yes safety and safety we talked about in terms of what there are two features here security environment conservation and disaster management yes that means that means now when we see this formula when we are moving in all those factors in upgrading their quality and the delivery to the people definitely the civilization will be having more what we have from the current status we will be rising to a higher rankings across all the parameters globally yes so that will be the civilizational development that we can create for ourselves and through this civilizational change through this civilizational development definitely various rudimentary or various undemocratic cultural values will be wiped off yes so various uh, various what out outdated cultural practices various what undemocratic values non egalitarian values will be wiped off on the basis of what this equitable development because this will lead to what evolution of society so this will be impacting what positive cultural changes now when you see the conclusion now in the conclusion what we can say is as change is the only thing that is permanent so what is permanent only change is permanent hence we can change both what we have and what we are yes again in the conclusion touching with the topic itself yes touching with the topic as change is the only thing that is permanent hence we can change both what we have and what we are so now now again connecting with the things that we discussed in the main body on the basis of the formula discussed above the positive civilizational development the positive civilization development symbolized by rise in rankings in all global parameters will upscale will upscale will improve what we have yes and what we can achieve as a civilization 
and the true test of our civilization is to achieve fraternity by consolidating unity in diversity yes so now we know we are a highly diverse country the highly diverse country can only be united when the basic needs of the people are getting filled when the basic needs of people are getting filled definitely they are in less stress they are less fr frustration lesser what jealousy against others they evolve they evolve and that will be the truest test of the civilization creating unity and diversity and that will only be happening on the basis of proper hrd and hrm and that will definitely pushing our ranking globally across all those factors so as a civilization will be marching ahead bringing changes in the culture so hence this will lead to what now the impact on the culture this transformation in what we have can expunge or remove yes our culture from undemocratic and non egalitarian constraints bringing democratic evolution in our culture further strengthening our already existing positive cultural ethos and hence evolving us in what we are yes so again so what we found in this topic again a recap of this topic we started with decoding the meaning of culture and civilization separately then we connected how civilization development brings change in the cultural practices if the civilizational development is happening in the positive sense definitely there what will be impact the negative cultural practices and the thoughts and the beliefs will be wiped off and a new thinking will emerge in the culture so cultural practices can change only if when the civilization is moving ahead yes i uh, i hope again you got the connect of the topic yes and you can definitely write again in 1200 words okay so what i did differentially for you is only uh, decoded the meaning of the topic created an introduction for you linked with the did that with a formula which you already know okay and then finally created a conclusion yes so what thing what three things you should be knowing yes uh, there should always be mention of the constitution in the introduction as well as in the conclusion because then we are moving the complete cycle we started with this is the constitution demanding and the conclusion this is the way to achieve yes okay so you have completed the entire cycle now on this note let us take a a different topic which is more general in nature yes okay so we have i've taken two philosophical essays let, let us now uh, take a topic which is more general in nature okay so now let us take this topic patriarchy is least noticed yet the most significant structure of social inequality yes so patriarchy so now we have to deal this topic this is linked with what in short this is topic of women empowerment yes this topic of women empowerment so let us see how to deal this so they have not directly used a term women they have not directly used a term what women empowerment yes okay but they have used a term patriarchy but it's directly linked with what issue of women empowerment so let us see how to deal with this topic now let us move directly to introduction yes so uh, if you remember in the class that uh, we did a case study on the issue of rape uh, if you remember that uh, the victim approached the women's police station but the lady suspector did not file the complaint yes instead siding with the innocent boys okay according to her they were innocent boys so means hold of patriarchy was properly visible there yes so now let us quote certain things which are commonly visible in our society but least noticed yes because we are in the flow of patriarchy because the people are trained in such a manner that they propagate patriarchy so not a proper introduction to form of the paragraphs but the pointers for you yes so in a women police station a lady police officer refuses to accept complaint of the victim blaming her that she is telling false story to implicate innocent boys yes this is a sign of patriarchy yes this is a sign of patriarchy 
Now, have you heard this term called Sarpanch Pati? We know that 33% of the seats are reserved for women in panchayats, yes? But women are just filling the post as a person. Major power lies with the husband of the of the lady elected, yes? So they are known as Sarpanch Pati, yes? So they are, so they are not having any power. Real power lies in the hand of the men. So patriarchy dominates even if we make provisions for the woman. So why provisions are not working? Because something is there problematic in the mindsets of the people. So until unless the mindset is getting cured, patriarchy will not be getting eradicated. Yes. Next. We all know most of the rituals, customs, and fasts are imposed on women. Okay. So I always give an example of what a thing called Karva Chauth. Yes, if you remember. Then binary division of work. This work is for men. This is for women. Okay. Then. Behavior, manners, and etiquettes defined by patriarchy. Yes. How they should be speaking, walking, talking, sitting, wearing, everything should be defined by the patriarchy. Yes. I always give an example grandmother expecting a grandson is a sign of patriarchy. Yes. Again, it's not the fault of grandmother. She has been raised in such a manner that she ultimately what propagates this yes. even women is struggling to get a fair share of representation in parliament and assemblies for many years the demand for 33 percent reservation assembly parliament is not accepted yes still pending glass ceiling in most of the working arenas you find glass ceiling where the discrimination against women yes Now, lesser women in STEM careers. STEM, you all know, science, technology, engineering, maths, mathematics. Yes. Land ownership is still dominated by men. So now what we are seeing is there are various visible factors. These are working. We are seeing, we are seeing, but they're still least noticed because it's a part of life. NCRB data, crime against women, yes. They keep on happening. But, but, constitution emphasizes on justice, liberty, equality for all citizens. That means including women. Now again, so how to achieve? That can be achieved. Justice, liberty, equality for the women can only be achieved by tackling patriarchy okay so you got you got you got the pointers which you can easily convert into introduction again you hinted about again you hinted about the constitution what the constitution is talking about and we have to achieve it and for achieving it now we have to move towards the main body yes. <clears throat> now main body Part one. So summarize. Now, now see, we have to show the extent of patriarchy. Yes. The in the introduction, we have used only few examples, but we have to show that how patriarchy functions very silently. So we have to ultimately connect with every possible discrimination against women, which is happening silently. So hence now summarize all common discriminations, visible and invisible that is present or prevalent in our society against women. So from where to start, you know, you know, from the entire life cycle of women, we have done in the class. Life cycle of women before being born, growing up years, in-laws, workplace, yes. Okay. So we have done starting with, with what feticide and infanticide, yes. Okay. So that means the entire life cycle of women. Okay. 
and where both inside and outside homes yes how it is visible yes. so now you have to summarize you have to summarize all the common discriminations which are happening from the past still continuing in the current society noticed or unnoticed very much visible or invisible it does not matter patriarchy prevails yes now part 2 will be now explore all possible factors impacting the topic yes now that means what are the factors which are creating a dominant patriarchy which are the factors so i told you i told you with respect to history yes with respect to past what we have discussed in the class we have discussed in the, in the class symbols of power if you remember i am going to give you again a hint symbols of power that is education land ownership kingship then access to administration then trade and commerce so when we see all these symbols of power with respect to history with respect to history in the past yes so there was general denial to women there was general denial to women yes all these were generally denied to women yes so from the past the hold of patriarchy has become very much dominant in our society where the women have been kept away from what various symbols of power yes so now you have to analyze every possible factor which has made the patriarchy dominant clear now further so what we have done so now we have summarized how the invisible patriarchy works on the basis of discriminations visible now how the how the patriarchy becomes so strong because of the past impact yes okay now now the third part will be let us not talk about the actions taken by us to counter patriarchy yes now part 3 will be actions taken so far to counter the hold of patriarchy and promoting liberation of women promoting liberation of women okay so now so actions taken i have hinted towards what we have to now see uh, we we are not going not going to say that we have to take actions now against patriarchy we have been taking actions we have to give weightage to all those actions taken so far and those actions can be divided into two parts actions taken in the pre independence era and actions taken after independence till now yes so we have to divide the actions into two parts pre independence and then post independence yes pre independence and post independence till now clear till now it's clear now if you have taken so many actions why we are not reaching the conclusion why there still patriarchy dominates that means now we have to find the lasting solution we have to find the lasting solution to this now the lasting solution will be part 4 so what can be done to achieve real women empowerment yes so i gave you a hint yes acts orders policies by the government or by the supreme court schemes are the directions which are the which are indicating and which are for indicating and bringing change from the state actors these are actions taken by the government or by the judiciary yes but for the fullest implementation these require support from the non state actors that is individually and collectively the common people 
okay we all know the progress or a civilizational development always moves ahead when both the parties are working in coordination in sync that is state actor and the non state actor so the real solution or lasting solution to patriarchy will be when the people accept change and promote empowerment of women deal with patriarchy so hence what we need to do is real change real justice emerge when it is reflected from the reflected from the change in the mindsets of people and reflected from their attitudes and actions so change happens only from the mind and when the mind is cured definitely a positive or favorable actions will be visible in the attitude and actions so that means we have to erase or eradicate the patriarchy from the minds of the people yes and here now you will be designing the formula how to cure the minds apply the iec ecosystem formula that we designed information education and communication i hope you remember this iec ecosystem formula that we designed in class we discussed at least 16 17 factors yes and that you, that we have to ultimately decode yes so i i e c ecosystem formula so what was our purpose to connect with any person irrespective irrespective of age educational qualification age educational qualification or location yes it does not matter it does not matter what is the age of the person what is the location of the person and what is the educational qualification of the person we should be having a customized iec formula so that we are going to connect with all types of people and bring change in their thinking and mindsets and this formula if properly applied sustainably applied for a longer period of duration definitely it can make an impact on the mind yes and there are 16 factors we have discussed it okay now see it is not the fault of the people that they behave wrongly yes people behave in the manner on the basis of the information they possess evolve them in the level of information understanding they will behaving differently yes so hence we have to just cure the mindsets and here works your iec ecosystem formula and now this will lead to your conclusion so what we have done we have started with the hints of hidden patriarchy in the introduction constitution talking about justice liberty equality for women yes all citizens including women yes then we talked about what are the uh, range of uh, hidden patriarchy commonly visible but still nobody is questioning then we talked about the factors then we talked about the actions then we talked about how to cure the mindsets now this will now lead to the solution you you are going to now say yes patriarchy can be tackled yes on the basis of the comprehensive implementation of ic formula as explained above the patriarchy can be tackled by liberating the minds of both women and men from patriarchal attitude yes for the comprehensive implementation this is also required comprehensive implementation of acts orders policies and schemes by removing paralysis of implementation we have to implement them properly so that they are reaching to all accompanied by sound and sustained ic ecosystem is the right recipe which can cure our society from the ills of patriarchy from the ills of patriarchy and finally if women become equal partners in development in all spheres of life then it multiplies the pace of societal 
national development and hence achieving the constitutional goals of justice liberty equality and fraternity yes okay now so now i have told you three conclusions yes conclusion should be very very brief not more than 100 words it should be giving a way forward way forward in the form of what touching the constitution again on the basis of what the cure that we have created in the main body because when we have talked about a cure when we mentioned a cure definitely it should be improving the conditions in the society and when the conditions improve we march towards constitutional goals clear i hope you got the uh, all the three essays i hope you are able i will able to write on all these three topics in very very uh now uh, sound manner now yes uh, because now you got every possible connection in your mind yes how to uh, deal with this essay or these essays so uh, again okay now let's just move towards the next topic the fourth topic so we have to design mindful manifesto so now let us again see what is the meaning of a mindful manifesto yes <clears throat> again introduction the signs of mindful manifesto are the display of rationality we have to explain this yes rationality inclusive and participate in open minded approach and display of and display of thinking and uncluttered mind yes uncluttered means with no confusion clarity of thought so that means manifesto defines our action yes what we are supposed to do and when the manifesto has been designed by properly thinking definitely it will having the features of rationality sanity more inclusiveness participation open mindedness displaying proper thinking and less confusion now when the mind is uncluttered uncluttered yes so an uncluttered mind display clarity of thought and vision so this creates for this cleanses the mind and heart from biases prejudices hatred superstitions blame game revenge jealousy greed moral corruption hence riddance of all the above when we are going to get rid from all these type of negativities then it is a start of tranquility yes so when we are not getting irritated frustrated or left out or jealous definitely it leads to what tranquil self so tranquility is always pr promoted by clarity of thought yes rationality scientific temper and definitely curtailed when these type of negativities takes shape yes in the mind so when we rid of uh, all these rid from all these negativities yes it leads to tranquility so this tranquility creates harmony where harmony where within self first of all within our and with surroundings and i have used this term use this line harmony with all the existence yes if you remember if you remember the uh, definition of education given by ravina tagore it was talking about create harmony with all the existence yes so that can only be done by the person who is having tranquility within yes that will be that will be the real meaning of tranquility creating harmony within self and with surroundings living in harmony with all the existence yes now again so in the introduction what we have done so far we have uh, decoded the meaning of mindful manifesto which symbolizes rationality sanity display of thinking thinking and what uh, uncluttered mind means no confusion at all bringing clarity of thought and vision and thus ridding ourselves of what all those negativities and hence leading to us tranquility in the mind also creating tranquility with the surroundings harmony with all the existence 
Now let us move ahead. The next uh, slide. Now, where is visible again? The most visible document of mindful manifesto is the Constitution of India. Okay. So again, in the introduction, again hinting towards the Constitution. See, Constitution will definitely be coming if you have got an introduction which is going to connect with the Constitution. Yes. It contains the blueprint for preparing a tranquil society. See, a tranquil society can only be prepared when we are promoting justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Now, when a society firmly believes and displays in attitudes and action, JLENF, along with protection of fundamental rights of others and commitment towards fundamental duties, then it leads to towards the individual and collective tranquility. Yes. Okay. That means this type of society is more mature, more considerate. Yes. And hence promote better participation, inclusion, acceptance of others. And such type of what collaboration, participation brings peace and stability, bringing tranquility everywhere, whether within self or with surroundings. On the contrary, but what we find, this is our expectation, but what is the current state of society is completely reverse. Okay. Not completely reverse, but yes, definitely to larger extent reverse. Yes. On the contrary, there's a huge mismatch between current status of society and constitutional morality. As tranquility of the self is declining, is declining due to breeding of selfish motives non-egalitarian values, overall decline in morality and ethics, resulting in general decline in peace, stability, and tranquility within the society. So again, we have to find a solution. We have to cure it. So again, we have to find a solution. We have to cure it. So now for curing, let us see, move ahead to the main body of this topic. So what we have done so far, mindful manifesto means what? Where it is visible again in the constitution of India. It has been crafted in such a manner to create a tranquil society, impacting tranquility of the self and even the collective nature of society. Now, when the society is marching on this, many things change, peace emerge. But when we see the current state of society, there are more flux going on. And that flux is mostly due to decline in what various things, that is selfish motives emerging, non-egalitarian values, very prominent, decline in morality, which is, which is now tempering with the peace, stability, and tranquility of everyone, yes, whether individual or collective. That means we, again, we have to reshape the society in such a manner or prepare the society in such a manner that tranquility prevails everywhere, impacting the self as well as the collective nature of society. So now let us move towards the main body. Hence in the main body of this essay, let us explore important examples of tranquility from past and current in detail. Now let us quote the example where the, some of the people have displayed tranquility. Now, normally what happened when we see, when the people provide, when the providers are there, distributors are there to distribute the things, enablers to help the others, the people who are helping the others or selfless workers or people working, working for conservation. Yes, they achieve the sense of tranquility because they are bringing, bringing benefits to the society. They're bringing positive changes in the society. And when the person is bringing positive change in the society is definitely having more satisfaction in the doing of the things and more sat satisfaction brings peace of mind. Okay. So now again, we have to quote certain examples. You can quote examples nationally, internationally. 
okay so normally providers distributors enablers selfless workers conservators achieve sense of tra self tranquility because they po uh, contribute positively achieve the peace of mind yes so hence the people working for safeguarding humanity that can be various social workers or the political people of the current or the past okay conservators of fauna flora environment yes okay various people who are working for benefiting the entire humanity and our existence they achieve a uh, they achieve what peace of mind yes tranquility that means who contribute positively are going to achieve the 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 self tranquility definitely in the course of action and in their life yes because of sense of positive achievement yes now this is the first part but this is not the entire main body entire major part of the main body will be how to promote tranquility among the masses impacting the individual as well as the collective nature of society okay you have to spread it so now so the question is how to impart mindful manifesto to the people in society so how to prepare them so that so that they are contributing positively and hence having a sense of achievement by benefiting the others leading to towards for peace of mind yes so mindful manifesto emerges through inculcation of values because when the values are there definitely people contribute positively to the society hence having sense of achievement and reduction in what inequalities through distribution of proper justice again if you remember the same formula yes the same formula that we were talking about that we discussed with respect to the first topic that we have discussed today uh first we talked about values to be nurtured so that people contribute positively and justice that is distributive justice so distributive justice in terms of first economic yes social yes values we have talked about values based education the five factors 1 2 3 4 5 you can easily recall all these so when the people are having better values or nurtured on values when their values become strengthened definitely they promote positivity positivity willing sense of satisfaction and achievement bringing tranquility majorly when we promote economic and social justice that means proper distribution of incomes earning opportunities bring what peace of mind stability in the society satisfaction social justice means respect to all when we spread respect to all why the people will be fighting yes why the people will be fighting hence definitely the society will be achieving the status of tranquility and when the it is visible across the society definitely it is impacting the self also okay so again you have to uh, explain this formula how to nurture the values how to promote distributive justice and lead to this leads to what more peace and stability this brings tranquility individually and collectively individually and collectively okay so again what i did only did for you is the introduction formula is already there with you you need to explain and finally leading to the conclusion yes so again the conclusion will almost be the similar that we are doing yes on the basis of comprehensive and non discriminatory implementation of formula explained above for the nurturing of evolved minds the individuals in the society gradually start marching towards better acceptance and application of democratic and egalitarian values become more participative and inclusive 
able to counter irrationality biases hatred decline in morality and hence himself or herself becomes beacon of uncluttered sound mind displaying constitutional values yes this leads towards broad emergence of mindful thoughts and actions that is mindful manifesto individually and collectively and finally leading towards tranquility within self and with surroundings so whatever we have started in the introduction should be concluded in the conclusion okay that completes the entire cycle of what writing now on this note let us take another topic the fifth topic yes there can be no social justice without economic prosperity but economic prosperity without social justice is meaningless okay so to promote social justice to promote social benefits economic prosperity that is money is an enabler yes money enables social justice but simply economic prosperity earning money without leading to promotion of social justice is meaningless yes so let us see naturally what is happening higher the earning should be lead, leading towards better social development yes this should be the this should be the way forward when we earn more definitely we should be investing more in what social development that should be the logic but if you are just earning and not creating social development that earning of money is becoming useless yes so let us see this topic introduction now the economic well being and social welfare yes the economic well being and social welfare work in tandem so they always go together whether individually or collectively for example if the family if the family income of a household rises then it leads to more investment and expenditure on better quality of life yes normally when our household income rise we definitely would invest in what more social benefits yes that is better shelter better nutrition health education skills creativity employability and thus gradually breaking the shackles of caste class and patriarchy barriers enabling access to rights and fair treatment yes so rise in incomes definitely creates what social mobility because now the people or the families can access better quality of life and hence can break the shackles of what the constraints constraints created by the patriarchy caste or class now further now when the people or the society uh, or the uh, families or the households move higher on social mobility on the basis of better earning definitely they become powerful voices they become powerful voices okay so this further enables more visibility and inclusion in public spheres whether political administrative social and private sectors so the high, higher sign of social mobility is when your voices are being heard so what so means earnings brings investment in social development investment in social development brings social mobility social mobility brings better voice and visibility across all the public spheres political administrative social and private sectors now this is also visible at national level yes first of all we gave an example of a family or a household now this is also visible at a national level 
when a country makes progress when a country makes progress economically then what happened when a country is generating higher higher gdp numbers yes normally what happen then higher revenue in the hand of the government yes to wider tax collection more revenue comes to the government and this can lead to more allocation to social welfare and human development schemes and programs yeah? so here we are talking about money either in the hand of the family or in the government should be promoting social development and again collaborative actions will be creating what wider social justice now for example this has been witnessed in post lpg era where our country on the basis of faster economic growth has pulled around 27 crore people out of poverty between 2006 and 16 yes, yes we have reduced the poverty due to faster economic growth but what has not happened a lot yet to be done for example we are still struggling to climb in hdi gender gap human capital index happiness index nutrition health and various parameters yes so still the social indicators are not moving forward though we are reducing the poverty but the social indicators are not moving forward so this type of economic development can be meaningless if it is not leading to better social development and better social justice so again you found the connection and the role of current affairs here now now to enable this faster now to enable this to enable this where the economic development and social development moves in tandem to enable this faster and higher inclusive economic growth promoting economic justice accompanied with sustained expansion of social welfare measures promoting social justice is needed yes so now we have to promote both economic justice as well as social justice in tandem to counter it in this regard the need to emerge as 5 trillion economy or even higher is imminent because we know without money without money there will not be social justice so first of all we have to earn money and then distribute the money to promote social justice well so the, in this regard now we are connecting with the desire to become a 5 trillion economy or even higher now what is the rational now i am going to quote the rational now this is the rational that we are trying to emphasize on in this topic larger the economy better the revenue for government should lead to should yes should lead to higher allocation for social upliftment measures promoting better social justice hence in this way sustained rising economic prosperity can result in better promotion of social justice this is on the government part yes now further if the economy is being promoted with with respect to inclusive growth providing income opportunities to maximum people in society so it will create disposable incomes in the families they will also contribute in social development so inclusive economic growth livelihoods to all disposable incomes and higher purchasing power in the hands of the people enables more household investment in social upliftment this is a rational yes government earning more investing more in social development people earning more investing more in social development collaborative efforts of both the government and the people promoting better social justice but what is the common factor money is the common factor i hope you got the introduction now now the main part will be we will focusing on first how to improve economic prosperity how to earn money first and then we will talking about how to transfer that money into promoting social development okay i hope you got this yes so the part one of the again uh, where is the visibility of this preamble preamble is talking about both social and economic justice okay preamble is again talking about social and economic justice so again we have touched with the constitution
Now, further, <clears throat> so now uh, I talked about that. First of all, we will be focusing on what, how to earn money first, how to promote economic prosperity. We want money to be transferred for social development later. Yes. Okay. Simultaneously. Sorry, not later. Simultaneously earn money, transfer it. So part one will be hence in the main body of this essay, let us design a formula for sustained rise in economic prosperity through inclusive growth and livelihoods to all. Okay, if you remember, if you have followed all the classes that I have given to you, we have discussed the topic of economic justice. And in that economic justice, we have uh, created a method of providing livelihoods to maximum people in the society. And we have talked about connecting at least 20 sectors, subsectors. If you remember, starting with what? Revival of rural incomes and ending with what? Even uh, uh, what? Uh, a new way of looking at the Manrega UBI. We have linked what various things, yes. So now uh, you are going to relook at that lecture. So what is the formula? The formula is, I am going to give you a brief on that. The formula was, we are a country of, see, we are a country of a labor force, which is largely unskilled to semi-skilled, yes. So three-fourth, of our workforce is most unskilled and less than 5% is skilled. Yes. So now, so how to create economy justice, income and earning to all, we have to focus first upon labor intensive sectors. So how to create income for the people, how to create economic prosperity. First of all, we have to identify what type of workforce, what type of demographic dividend we have. Majority of the people in our country are mostly unskilled to semi-skilled and very less skilled. That means we have to create an economy which is going to create inclusive growth. Hence, to promote inclusive growth and to address the needs of majority of the people, the first major area of intervention should be the labor intensive sectors. And to trigger the labor intensive sectors and the related impact on the society, we have to find the right triggers in the economy, which is going to impact the maximum people. So if you remember, we have discussed the right triggers of the economy, if properly pressed, they can create a chain reaction in other connected sectors and subsectors. And what were those right triggers? Right triggers were the first revival of rural income. Why this becomes very, very important because still 65% of the people reside in villages and they are mostly dependent on rural incomes, whether crop or non-crop. Clear? So here we, we created a, we created a method. So here rural incomes, how to revive both crop incomes and non-crop incomes. So revival of rural incomes become very important because it will bring earning to maximum households in our country. And that earning in the hand of the people can definitely be converted by them into better social development of their families. Okay. So first of all, we need to focus on revival of rural incomes and the second trigger and the second trigger that we talked about is the role and importance of tourism sector. The role and importance of tourism sector. We know we are moving towards more digital economy. We are moving towards more AI, AI, sorry, AI, machinery, capital intensive industries. We have to search for areas which are least impacted by the role of technology, still relying on what human manpower. Yes. Okay. So here, tourism sector. And I gave you a hint how tourism sector can be a huge game changer, especially for the people who are mostly unskilled to semi-skilled. Now these two triggers, these two triggers can now 
create a chain reaction leading to the revival and expansion of other sectors so we all came to know that agriculture revival of income rural areas will be creating demand for what manufactured goods similarly tourism also creates demand for manufactured goods so that means the third area which will be moving ahead will be manufacturing manufacturing definitely works on definitely demand and supply yes so we have to generate demand and demand will only be generated when we are generating incomes in the hand of the people through right triggers okay now so three but we connected not three but 20 20 sectors and sub sectors yes now relook for the economic justice part that we discussed in the class try to connect how to create incomes for all the people whether skilled semi skilled or unskilled when most of the people are getting gainful livelihoods earning definitely there is always an aspiration among the people this is a common aspiration when we earn more we want to live better yes this is a common aspiration when you earn more live better that leads to investment in what social development better education better skills yes better what recreation better shelter yes we invest in various things which upgrade our life clear yeah. so this is the way to bring money in the pockets of the people and they themselves invest in what social development creating better justice social justice now this economic revival will be bringing money to the government also this economic revival will be bringing money to the government also in the form of tax collection wider tax collection and that the government will now be using in what higher allocation for social welfare measures yes now the government will be diverting that for higher allocation to various social welfare measures and what are these social welfare measures let us see <clears throat> these are these are yes earning in the hand of the government should be definitely be going for yes education yes what is the education policy talking about minimum 6% of gdp should be going to education that will only be happening when the country is earning more when the government is diverting more to the social investment okay so now the diversion of social welfare to health skill development financial inclusion social security cost effective and speedy justice now even the functioning of judiciary requires allocation of more money to hire more judges to create better courts prevalence of justice promotion of justice with the voice of the poor are being heard marginalized are being heard yes higher budgets to commissions and departments we have created various commission commission for women commission for children commission for labor for sc and sts backwards minorities we created n number of commissions but what they majorly lack adequate budget that will only be happening on the basis of higher earning in the hand of the government government diverting the money for investment and when these type of areas receiving enough money the path will be now be moving towards better social justice better budget allocation for local self governance even scheduled areas policing expansion of government services and even budget going for sustained ic campaigns to change the mindset so there is a direct connection between earning of money and promoting social development and this should be happening in such a manner again it's not the role of only of the government to invest more but government will be investing only more when the government is doing one thing first that is creating earning opportunities for the people people earn definitely they want to live better they invest in social development of their families similarly government comprehensively earning better should be investing all those by providing better budget and hence providing social development combine both these efforts households efforts and the government efforts path towards social justice opens
now this will be leading to the conclusion now, the conclusion will be on the basis of methods of inclusive growth and economic development as explained above the sustained rise in economic prosperity can easily be culminated into better expansion of social benefits yes you are going to say yes money is a facilitator to bring prosperity but prosperity becomes meaningful when it leads to better quality of life not only in material terms but also in terms of social visibility acceptance inclusion respect dignity and social justice hence sustained rise of to sustained rise in economic prosperity along with sustained direction and implementation of social welfare can result in social justice so they have to work in tandem otherwise otherwise conclude with the doubt that they have created in the introduction otherwise just rise in gdp numbers without distribution of incomes can neither bring can neither bring economic prosperity nor social justice to all so again we have proved what is there in, in the topic that first part of topic is saying that yes social justice can be enabled to economic prosperity we have proved it and definitely we have ended with a doubt if the if just the rise in gdp numbers happening on the basis of what uh inequal distribution of income it will neither be creating economic prosperity economic justice to people nor it will be helping in social justice okay now so um, i have done uh, what around five topics for you yes so i hope you can uh, write on these five topics okay now for the other three uh, now you are going to use the your mindful manifest to write the other three yes so i give you enormous ideas so what you can do is uh, you can ultimately put your ideas and share it with me on my email yes okay so see everything should not be hinted yes i have given enormous hints and i have given you five topics in detail and ultimately showed you what we covered in the class is basically the right recipe for writing the upsc essays and even your gs answers can be improved on the basis of such type of what intermixing of knowledge yes every ammunition every material is now with you so do revise yes do revise and send me the other three write ups on which i have not given you discussion i have kept them uh, deliberately not to be discussed because i want to see whether after discussing these five five essays are you able to put your thoughts on the rest three i told you that rest three can also be written from the same type of content and knowledge yes clear on this note on this note see uh or other people who may be uh, see if you want to do a revision of the uh, basically the if you want to still revise all these things if you have forgotten you are going to connect me with me because i am going to what uh, come up with the rouse i study circle is come up with what uh, coming up with what sa qip classes from what 8th of february if you want to join it for a revision session with tests yes so i want to uh, show you when it's going to start what is going to Okay, now, so uh, the SA QIP program is coming up for for the students, generally for students, uh, open to all. Uh, if the Rao students want to join for a revision, they can also join. Others people, other connected friends of you, if they are interested for a full idea of what how to write essays with the conceptual clarity, the formulas, the methods, and definitely improving even their uh, impacting the GS answer writing, they can definitely connect with the coming SA QIP program. 
uh, that is starting on what 8th of february yes there will be what uh, 15 online lectures with class recordings three thematic tests and discussions and three full and test with discussions so these three flts will be after the prelims examination and now for this yes definitely people can contact so you are uh, mostly from what rouse you know this but the others seeing this definitely can be joining and contacting rouse and that will be again a hugely enrichment programs you can communicate communicate to any of your colleagues interested and definitely you have got what you were ultimately asking how to decode the essay and and the people who want content can definitely connect with me with the essay qip classes and any doubt at this moment if you the people who are still a participant if you are any doubt at this moment just ask me now one to one yes i'm going to end my what delivery at this moment i want to listen to you what is your experience of listening to this discussion uh, how confident are you in what dealing with the things and still what are the recurring doubts just share those with me yes